So first, the uh, H Radeon HD 2000 series. So this is a brand new uh, product family that we're launching. It turns out this is my 10th high-end product launch that I've been a uh, participant in. So what kind of makes this different? Well, obviously, the, the first thing that makes it different is, hey, I'm part of AMD now. So uh, we get to talk about a much broader story, which is very exciting. The other really exciting part about this is, you know, our graphics technology would work its way down and then it would eventually go away. But now actually we can work it down and it will show up in CPUs in, in just a couple of years. Kind of a, a third difference is, that, oh, yes, I'm going to talk about a high-end product called the 2900. And I'm also going to talk about nine other products. So rather than typically you have to wait 6, 12, 18 months sometimes before it works into the mainstream or value segment, you're going to find out that we're going to launch all these products simultaneously. So 10 products, hence the, the perfect 10. Some of the leadership features that we have, a 512-bit uh, bus to the graphics uh, memory. That's the first time in the industry that's ever been done. It's the widest uh, bandwidth that uh, has been available. Of course, as, as ATI, um, three or four years ago, we introduced the 9700, Radeon 9700 product. That it was the first 256-bit bus. So once again, we're kind of breaking the, 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 the new barriers here. In addition, uh, you'll hear the majority of the products are 65 nanometers. So we'll be the first company that has 65 nanometer GPUs uh, in the industry. Well, what does 65 nanometers bring you? Well, of course, lower power, as you would expect as you move into the small, smaller semiconductor geometries. Higher performance allows our, our products to run at higher speeds. And then actually, it also lower cost. So our, our partner, TSMC, has done a fantastic job yielding uh, these products. So we're going to be in a very uh, steep ramp over the next several months as we, as we bring this entire product family to market, DirectX 10. Um, for those that, that aren't uh, that familiar with the graphics market is there's APIs that we as a hardware company des design to and write software drivers to and the game developers write their games to. And for the last time we had a, a DirectX change was way back in 2002. So it's been uh, four or five years since uh, this has been introduced. So it's a big inflection point in our market. Another big inflection point that's happening in the PC market, and actually the consumer market in general, is moving from DVD, of course, to high definition DVD or, or Blu-ray. Hence, you see the HD up there. So Radeon HD 2000. We tune this family not only for graphics, but also for video. So I mentioned the, the 512-bit memory bus. Well, what does that translate into bandwidth? Over 100 uh, gigabytes per second or over 100 billion uh, bytes per second of, of memory traffic that we can sustain on our graphics bus. And classically, performance follows your memory bandwidth. And that's what you'll see up here on the, on the red line is the actual memory bandwidth. And then we took an industry standard benchmark, something called 3D Mark. This happens to be the 2003 version. And we ran it on all the different uh, GPUs that we've introduced over the last six or seven years, starting actually with the original Radeon all the way up to the a new one that we're launching on Monday, the 2900 XT. And you'll see, started out, you can't quite see that, at 300 was the score. And now our, our new product runs 38,000. So as you can see, it's about 120 something improvement in performance. So for those of you who are trying to do the, the moral law calculations in your, in your head, if you do the 300, 600, 1200, the, the doubling each year, uh, or each two years, excuse me, that, that would get you to 4,800. So you just use that as a, as, a, as a metric, we're going about 9x in that time frame, uh, 8 or 9x faster than, than Moore's Law and graphics. And there's no cheating going on. That's a standard benchmark that you can download and run it on our GPUs and, and, uh, and, and just see. That doesn't even account for some of the other features that we've added, like floating point and so on. Key feature, unified shader architecture. Uh, for those that uh, were part of the Xbox 360 uh, launch actually a year and a half ago, I talked about the importance of the unified shaders one of the, the three key innovations that Microsoft and uh, ATI or AMD worked on during that time frame. We've taken that same shader core and moved it now in, into PC graphics. And so what is, what is the key thing that the unified shader, what does it mean? Well, when you hear about the 2900, you'll find out that we have 320 shader processors. And <coughs> previous generations, you'd actually have two different kinds of shader processors called vertex shaders and then pixel shaders. The vertex shaders work kind of on the, what's called the geometry and graphics or the, or the detail orientation. And then the pixel shaders are actually the, the colors and, and so on that, that you have seen on, in the previous demos. Well, those are two, two separate things. So obviously that's not as efficient if you could move it into a single type of processor, hence the unified uh, shader. And that's, that, that's it, a key innovation on DXN, which we're supporting in a family of products that 
uh, we're launching. So some of the other key highlights of our, of our uh, Radeon 2000 uh, series family. So first, it's uh, 700 million transistors. So that's a, a nice, healthy number of transistors uh, built in 80 nanometer TSMC process. Very high clock speeds for, for GPUs, uh, <coughs> up to 800 megahertz, and then even higher uh, frequencies on the memory side as well. Uh, I talked about the unified shader with 320 of those stream processors. So just think of those as, as parallel processors. So multi-core is kind of the, what we talk a lot in our industry. So think of 320 multi-cores. <coughs> and then image quality, image quality features as well around high dynamic range, which means just more color fidelity. And then something else that we call Crossfire, uh, so that's dual graphics or multi-graphics support. Uh, also done natively, you can just plug it into two graphics slots in your PC. The X10 uh, goes with Vista. So you can't get the X10 without Vista. So Vista is going to be very important for the PC gaming market uh, in 2007. All that HD content is, is great, but it also creates some headaches for us as well. If you compare it to standard definition, it requires about eight times the computational power. And so what, what that can mean is more power in, in the PC, more fans, lower battery life. Recognizing that challenge a couple of years ago, we, have, we went out and created uh, the UVD device, the Unified Video Decoder, uh, in, in concert with our R&D team uh, that works on uh, high-definition televisions as well. With our GPU solutions, you can actually watch a Blu-ray or HD DVD disc for the full two hours that you want to watch it. And if you don't have one, you're probably going to see about uh, an hour and 20 minutes of, of battery life. And that depends on your configuration and your batteries and so on. But uh, we believe we have, this is the only way you can really watch a full Blu-ray uh, movie during your, your flight. So we launched 10 products, so five in the desktop space. So everywhere from well below $99 to a $399 price point. So we wanted to bring all this, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, all those great features that I talked about, DX10, UVD, and, and all those different, uh, different price points. Uh, from availability perspective, you'll see that the highest end one, the 2900 XT, um, will be shipping on Monday. So, in fact, a few websites kind of jumped the gun on us already. <laughs> so, uh, as, as we crack them down, but uh, you, you'll see those on the shelves in North America and around the world on, on Monday. Uh, the other ones will, will ship uh, more uh, uh, in, in the June time frame. And it's just not about desktop in North America. About half the, the systems that now ship, for example, are, are notebooks. So we launched five desktop products. We're launching five notebook products simultaneously as, as well. Some of those were already announced uh, earlier this week, uh, but it ranges everywhere from uh, like $799, more of a mainstream notebook, all the way up to the premium notebooks uh, above $1,000, where you'll be able to get that DX10, UVD, and, and all those key features.